I want to um, tell you, d describe some of the disrespect, how these doctors have treated me here, and um, and man, the cognitive dissonance, the the mental gymnastics, and it is, it is, uh, it is abuse. You know, we we tiptoe we tiptoe around these subjects. It is abuse. I have Chiari malformation, right? I have a a. a uh, a brain herniation is what it is. My skull is too small for my brain and the brain is being pushed down into the spinal column, right? There's a hole at the bottom of our skull like this and there is no room in my skull and the brain is being squished down into my neck and that can cause all sorts of serious issues like numbness in the, the arms and legs, hands and feet, um, breathing issues, sleep issues, all sorts of serious issues. My left eye has been blurry for, you know, four or five months. Uh, it can cause hearing issues. I lost, you know, a significant amount of my hearing for two years. I, I could hardly hear anything. And then one day my hearing just came back. It's like out of the blue, I started sleeping only one or two hours a night, literally fighting for my life. Um, this, this is just, I, I've had severe sleep issues for, you know, I'd say all my life or maybe 40 years. I've been, I've been fighting for, for help with the sleep issue and, um, I'm a brain patient. I've never been treated like a brain patient. They found uh, my brain condition uh, through, it was diagnosed 15 years ago through a brain MRI. They didn't tell me uh, what this condition was. It's Chiari malformation, right? And pardon me, Chiari malformation. The brain is hanging down nine and 11. The, the cerebellum tonsils are hanging down nine and 11 millimeters. There are people with smaller measurements who have, you know, thousands of patients with smaller measurements have gotten surgery or even passed away, right? This is, this is a significant brain issue if you're symptomatic, right? And, um, I've never, I have never been treated like a brain patient. I, I have never, they've known I've had this for 15 years. I've, I've had this for decades, right? I'm a brain patient. They didn't tell me about this diagnosis. I've never been medically treated and spoken to like a brain patient. Like family doctors, specialists, whatever. They they can see it in my records. They've never treated me like a brain patient. And and I've literally been fighting to survive for years. And then, you know, brain injured a few times. Uh, six years ago, four years ago, brain injured from medications literally fighting for my life. I have never been spoken to as a brain patient and, and doctors have never s spoken to, spoke, spoken about carry malformation to me. This, this, we have ignored this. They have wanted to completely avoid this. They've wanted to pretend that I don't have this condition. And, you know, once this became crisis level, like, like I was only sleeping one or two hours a night, literally, I was awake 22, 23 hours a day, 365 days a year for four and a half years, fighting and screaming for my life with brain inflammation, with, with severe pain and tenderness. Uh, severe apnea. Nobody believed this was, nobody believed me. I'm literally fighting for my life with severe apnea. 
I, I believe I was in respiratory failure. And not once, not once did, 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 was I treated like a brain patient? Was I, sp not once was I spoken to, you know, as a brain patient. We weren't troubleshooting. We weren't talking about this. They were avoiding this. They were scared of this. They were, uh, <clears throat> I want to tell you how disrespectful this has been. How severely, you know, the, the cognitive dissonance of medical professionals 100% wanting to avoid this conversation at all costs and treating me like, uh, you know, some doctors treating me like, like I'm crazy, like I'm the problem. Like, uh, so I want to tell you a couple scenarios with, with these doctors. When I was in absolute crisis, uh, fighting for my life, I went to the sleep study. I had an hour and a half of sleep. I'm in absolute crisis with breathing, with my brain, with not sleeping. I had an hour and a half of sleep. And, and this was what it was like 365 days a year. Nobody believed me. I had an hour and a half of sleep in the hospital. I proved to them how ill I am. And I'm sitting in front of this specialist and I'm saying to him, how, you know, I have Chiari malformation, right? He refuses to speak. He's looking at me. He's like three feet away from my face. He's refusing to speak. I am fighting for my life. And it took everything, everything in me to get to this point. To be sitting with this specialist. I'm saying, you have, you know, I have carry malformation, right? He's a, uh, a sleep respirologist. He's looking at me, he refuses to speak. I'm saying to him, how could my Chiari malformation be affecting my sleep? He's looking right at me and refusing to speak. I'm say and, and cause I didn't know anything about Chiari yet at all. I didn't look up anything. I didn't research. Nobody has even given me any information about this condition. I said to him, could, how could, how could, could Chiari be like, uh, causing sleep apnea, affecting sleep apnea at all? Does this have anything to do with Chiari malformation? Looking me di directly in the eye, refusing to answer my questions. Can't, could these medications have been impacting my sleep? Uh, could, could the medications be affecting the sleep apnea? Cause I didn't know anything yet at this point, looking right at me, refusing to speak refusing to offer me any information, refusing the, the, I want to, I want to say this. These people are making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year on, on taxpayers money, Canadian taxpayers money. They're employed to help us save our lives. And he's refusing to answer my questions, refusing to and they want to pretend that you're the problem that you're you're an, you're a problem you're fighting for your life and you're being treated like you're the problem the the disrespect to refuse to answer my questions and there's no medical advocacy here right i wanted a medical advocate with me no one will provide advocacy for you, right? You're fighting for your life and you're being, your, your questions, your, your relevant questions, they're refusing to answer. 